We will not let the weather stop us from showing the Big Ten Softball Tournament, the final game of the day as part of the 2019 Big Ten Softball Tournament in Bloomington, Indiana. Andy Moore Field home to the Indiana Hoosiers and our final game, the impressive number six seed Rutgers Scarlet Knights against the number 11 seed Purdue Boilermakers. We're going to get it in as we take a look at the Meyer Tournament bracket. Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana have already won today. Minnesota awaits the winner of this one. As you take a look at the Purdue starting lineup brought to you by Atletico. Yeah, and you see the top five and you see Jenny Bay in there leading the team in batting average. Look at the bottom four. Those are the ones that I find very interesting. The ones you want to see do a little bit of offensive output so the top of that lineup isn't so heavy on having to do all the work. I think when they do that, they have a chance to be very successful. All right. Great job by the Indiana grounds crew to allow us to get this final game in. And here we go. First pitch and Purdue off that first pitch. Boo de Oliveira, the head coach for the Purdue Boilermakers, said they were going to be aggressive, which I wasn't sure about because Purdue is a team that walks a lot, right? And sure enough, first pitch, a leadoff single for Rachel Becker. No doubt about that. You can't be more aggressive than the first pitch. And you see some little questions on the field. It looked as if Rutgers tagged first base, thinking as if Becker did not touch first base. They called her safe when Rutgers tagged first base. But at the same time, Becker started running back to first. Which is where the confusion is. So you see here, ooh, that was close. I think maybe that toe, ooh, you see dirt there. I'm not sure she did touch first base. Is she rounded? Take another look here. All you have to do, you can touch the side of that base. It looks a little bit like she may have fit, missed first base. Well, she's Rachel Becker standing at second base, so that'll bring up Mallory Baker with Jenny Bayon on deck. To stick. So here's the rest of it. As Becker gets to second base, she gets there. They get the ball in. And off camera here, they're tagging first base. The umpires talked it over, though, and... You see it here. Now that where the throw comes back to first base, that forces Becker to think she has to go back and tag it. Now she's kind of in a rundown. Uh, you can see the umpire calling dead ball. There's a lot of confusion there, but either way, she was on second base. And a run's going to score, though. After all of that, Becker ruled safe. Baker with an RBI. And Becker and Baker... A part of an opening run here for the Purdue Boilermakers. Two hours and 45 minutes, approximate delay, and they're ready to go. Talk about aggressiveness. Again, Baker comes through big here. Just a ground ball just past first base. And she's able to get on base with Becker. And the speed that she has at second base, she's able to get all the way in. Good slide at home. Purdue's on the board early. So they call him Boo's three Bs to start the lineup. Becker, Baker, and Bayon. What a crazy first play here, Jenny Ritter. Yeah, so again, the question is, did she touch first base? If she didn't, then Rutgers was right at making the throw to first to get her out. Either way, dead ball. She's at second base. But you can see the confusion again. In this situation, Dean, it's interesting to me because to me I feel like the ball is still live. And she left to go back. But you can see dead ball, umpire call there. Either way, good break for Purdue to keep Becker at second base. That put her in scoring position to push that run across on a Baker hit. So after all of that, still no outs. And as if there's not been enough craziness tonight, <laughs> right? 
They decided to, they saw this storm coming in, the cell coming in. This one's hit deep. Jenny Bayen, and up against the wall. And now first and second because Baker did not get a huge lead there. That was hit deep. Bryce Baker was only a few feet off of first base. And Jenny Bayen standing at first base with just a long single. Yeah, this ball, I mean, right at the fence. So it was definitely deep enough. Yeah, Baker could have gone almost all the way to second and still made it back to first if that ball was caught. Take a look at the Rutgers defense as we barely had a chance to even talk about Cora Price, the superstar pitcher. It's Burkhardt, Aniko, and Iliopoulos across the outfield. Boy Hughes, Mara, and Bowman across the infield, both left to right. Winger, the superstar catcher. And how about Cora Price, this freshman pitcher, 16-9. She really has been a leader here for Rutgers. She's young, though, just a freshman. She's 16-9, that 2.87 ERA. Maybe showing a little bit of nerves here in the Big Ten tournament. Maybe a little too much time waiting, Dean. Crazy. Good start, though, for the three Bs to lead off. Becker, Baker, and Bayon. So now Lexi Huffman will settle in. As Jenny Ritter told you, the first five hitters hitting over 300 for the Purdue Boilermakers, who come in 30-26. and 26, A rough patch to end this season as Denny, their last win was back on April 16th against Notre Dame. But you know what? It's the full body of work. So they did enough early when they had to face some tough teams in Northwestern, Wisconsin, and Illinois. And yes, they took losses. It didn't affect them. And here they're shaking it all off. And the bases are juiced here. And Cora Price, who's had an incredible year, has not been able to get anybody out. Yeah, it looks a little bit just, um, you know, obviously you see this pitch up, up in the zone and hitting the elbow of Lexi Huffman. But you have to think, Cora Price is a freshman. The game has, for them, they've been waiting around for all day to get out here. And now you're excited. And what does Purdue do? They attack you in their first three batters. I mean, that's enough to get you a little bit rattled. And you've got to find a way to kind of get your balance back, understand what you can do and what you're capable of doing. Core Price is a good pitcher. I think this is, I mean, again, it's that freshman thing, Dean, where you're talking about you play loose because you don't know what you're getting into, but at the same time, sometimes you play too tight because you realize how big the stage is. Purdue's got a chance to blow this wide open here in the top of the first after this long delay. Bases are loaded. Out in front, though, on Casey Wilhoyt, walk-on freshman who made the All-Big Ten All-Defensive team. Behind the count, 0-2. Wilhoyt showing a little bit of patience, but maybe should take a note from the rest of her team so far that they've just attacked these first pitches. Of Price, Navi in the battle from behind. This one bounced in, though, and that's going to score a run. And Purdue off to a phenomenal start. In trouble in the circle for Cora Price. Now this pitch just got away from Price. You see it. Look how far outside it was. Wingert could not get in front of it to block it. And Wingert's a great catcher. Her ability to stay in front of a ball is huge. So that that, that got past Wingert. You can tell how far away it was in that dirt. Allowed another Purdue runner to score in Baker. So Will Hoyt, who is behind in the count 0-2, battles back with Purdue leading 2 to nothing, And runners moving over to second and third. Look at the head coach for the Purdue Boilermakers, Boo De Oliveira. Great, great job by Will Hoyt to work this count three and two. This pitch by Price, not that far off the zone, a little out and low, but a great two-two pitch. Kind of forced Will Hoyt to to fish for a bad pitch. at that. 
Getting credit to Price on that last pitch. Still on that outside corner. Seven pitches at bat. Eighth one coming, but Price was still not throwing that down the middle. So often you see pitchers with full count sort too far over the plate. Full count. Great diving catch there by the third baseman, Maya Moy, wearing that full brace on the knee. And Moy just charging this one, coming up in the air. She sees it, reaches, and at the last second lays out for it. And a great catch. And that's the defense Rutgers has to have behind the pitcher Price to stay in this game. Moy suffered a torn meniscus and a complete rupture of the ACL. This one's popped deep, and the runner didn't tag. I have no idea why. It comes all the way back, and a double play. It is wacky softball here to start. We're seeing it all, but Purdue gets two across. The runner just took off running as it's popped out, and that could help Rutgers. Runner just takes off. Jenny Bay and Miskew thinking it might have been two outs here, but a big break for Rutgers as they're able to get out of the inning. Some late night craziness as we take a look at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights batting order brought to you by Atletico. And again, Katie Winger, Alyssa, Anissa Ilapos leads this team, but Katie Winger, what a powerful hitter. She leads that team in home runs and RBIs, playing in that two spot, a really good place for her to be, especially with Iliopoulos behind her. All right, let's go to the circle for the Purdue Boilermakers and take a look at the starter, Sydney Bates for Purdue. Yeah, 11 and 8 on that season. You kind of see that 3.58 ERA. 135 innings. Has done a good job for Purdue just to get the innings in, keep her team in the game when she can. Purdue and Rutgers did not face each other in the regular season, so their first look against each other. A short stop and... Hughes is thrown out. Becker over to Huffman as we take a look at the defense. Across the outfield, left to right, it's Will Hoyt, Hickson, Ball, and Baker. And it's Bay and Becker, Chase, and Huffman across the infield, left to right. A lot of catching the Bates. And the second batter is Wingert, who has been a social media sensation. Three consecutive walk-off home runs in three consecutive home games. I don't know, the, the word is it's never been done at the major league level, right? Or fast pitch softball, three consecutive walk-off home runs at home. Incredible. As Winger will go down, two up, two down for Bates. I think, you know, the thing with Winger that gets me when you, you say that is how clutch she is. She doesn't let the moment get too big. I mean, so many times everybody wants to be the hero. They have too big of a swing, and they don't come through. But Wingert, Coach uh, Butler says, has ice in her veins. She's got 17 home runs to lead the Big Ten. A very good Big Ten conference with three teams that had over 20 wins. And here is the Greek national team player, Anissa Iliopoulos, with those 12 home runs. The first three batters, and they've already... Got the first two outs, have 39 of the 53 home runs. The 53 home runs is a school record. And it's the first time they've had three different players hit double-digit home runs in the same season as Iliopoulos with 12 home runs. Hughes has double-digit, and Wingert leads the Big Ten with 17. Rutgers 28 and 23, 11 and 12 as the former Toledo head coach Kristen Butler, who was the SEC Player of the Year at Florida, and Bates, no problem. Hughes, Winger, Iliopoulos, all those home runs. One, two, three. The Boilermakers lead it two nothing after one. What a difference a year makes for both these teams as Purdue. 
ranking high in multiple categories across the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, sack flies, as, as funny as that sounds, is a big deal. It, second in sack flies means that you're doing something on that base pass, so I like that number. It's something that uh, you see them executing well, and that's a way to push more runs across the board, and credit to Booty Alvera to, to just get the bat in their hands and make something happen. 7, 8, 9 due up for Purdue here in the top of the second. As that'll be Chase, Bates, and Halata. A little visit to check on Cora Price. Story and her appreciation for the work her father does for the United States Air Force. Price. Yes, Cora Price, her father, Christian, is an active member of the United States Air Force, and Cora learned how to pitch on an Air Force base in Germany. And she wears that towel right there with a POW MIA patch as dedicated to the work and honor of the military men and women that give so much to give her the opportunity to be free and play softball. This is her quote, Jenny Ritter. She said, these military folks get overlooked and we get to experience so much because of their sacrifice. I wear their patch to help give them a voice and the recognition they deserve. She goes on to say that without question, her father, Christian, has been the most important inspiration in her life and right now Christian is down in Alabama teaching future soldiers of our country as we say hello to him and the pop out Cora was born in Arkansas then lived in Texas Florida Kansas Germany Colorado Spain and currently Alabama and her dad actually hired pitching coaches for Cora on the base in Germany. And she then had her first competitive action during her high school years in Colorado Springs, where the beautiful Air Force Academy is. I mean, just a tremendous story and a kid that, you know, has gone through a lot of adversity in a lot of ways. I mean, that, that much moving and traveling and the things can be difficult for a kid. And she has just, to me... You know, you hear about her and you learn about her. She's just grown and become so mature and and really handled things beautifully. Sydney Bates. Mara over to Bowman. Price settling down a little bit this inning. And again, you're getting here to the bottom of the lineup. Batting average is down a little bit little bit of production down where the top of the lineup is where you see most of Purdue's production. So this is something, if you're priced, you do want to go right at Chase and Bates and Halata and make sure that you get those outs quickly and not turn that lineup over back to the top. So Boo told us that they were going to jump on the first pitch. And I didn't really believe her, actually. <laughs> she had no reason to mislead us. But when you look at their stats, they've drawn a ton of walks. They're amongst the leaders. They're patient. They've seen a ton of pitches. But she wasn't kidding. That's exactly what they've done right through the entire order. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think, you know, so, time, so many times you can hear coaches say, we're going to attack the first pitch. It's the best one you'll see all day. But that doesn't mean that you can always get your players to pull the trigger, unfortunately. And, you know, for whatever reason... This team is committed to that game plan and attack that first pitch. I love it. I mean, they've seen success, too. Third season at Purdue. It's good off speed here. Take a look at this pitch as it comes off Price's hip. Low, slow, and gets lower. Balance of a lot as she keeps swinging at it. Great to be with all of you after the two-hour and almost 30-minute delay in Game 3, an Indiana victory to the final game of the opening day of 
the Big Ten Tournament. You saw the bracket presented by Meyer. Ohio State will face Wisconsin tomorrow at 11. Michigan will take on Illinois at 1.30. Northwestern, your number two seed, will meet the host, Indiana. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers await the winner of this one. A season perhaps unlike any other for the Big Ten. First time ever they've had three teams with 20 wins, and they've got seven teams Seven top 50 RPI. And strikeout, better second inning for Cora Price. Kristen Butler making Rutgers relevant again in softball, coming over as the MAC coach of the year. Four great seasons at Toledo, including last year getting 35 wins for the Rockets. The former SEC Player of the Year, a power hitting catcher for the Florida Gators, has found herself a home in Piscataway, New Jersey, as the head coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And what a breath of fresh air for Rutgers and for the Big Ten, another solid coach. Bowman, and that's going to drop in for a base hit, the first base hit for Rutgers, so a leadoff single here in the bottom of the second for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And I agree with you, Dean, another solid coach for the Big Ten, and I, you can see this hit, by the way, just kind of a pop fly in narrow left field. Easy way for Bowman to get on and get a leadoff runner on, good spot for Rutgers to be. But Kristen Butler spent a lot of time, I, I kind of talked to her about just how quickly she's been able to turn the program around. It's, it's To me, it's almost unheard of. We, you know, we talked about it, and, you know, quite honestly, last year and previous years, if you didn't sweep Rutgers in the Big Ten, you were having a bad series. And it was one of those things where I kind of mentioned it to Kristen, Coach Butler, and, and she had said, yeah, and the girls knew it. And so this year they came in and, they changed the culture a lot. She spent a lot of time doing 6 a.m. workouts, some more weight workouts, some stern talks. Uh, you know, she said they literally died at the beginning of the season. To me, that is something that, you know, you do have to change the culture. It's not for everybody, but the ones that do stick around, the ones that do stay, they really bought in. They really bought into what she could do. Um, she talked about conditioning, pushing them to get more wins, a 300-yard shuttle is going to get you two more wins because you're going to learn what it's like to tough out in a 300-yard shuttle to get those wins. Things like that that change the culture and the mindset of these athletes, and they literally, Dean, look like a completely different program. They absolutely do. So well said. The DP, Penelope Russ, hitting 318. who is a catcher, but we already told you how great Wingard is behind the plate. She's got great numbers, but her fielding percentage is pretty phenomenal. Russ as well. In high school, her field, fielding percentage as a catcher in high school was 994. Just to give you an idea of the fact that how good Wingard is. So two great catchers on this team, which I think is always important. Strikeout. Bates sits down the DP Russ. Yeah, Russ showing a little too much patience on that. You get two strikes on you, a pitch that comes this far in the zone. You've got to make a decision a little bit quicker than this. You see, Russ just could not pull the trigger on a swing. A called third strike there. So that'll bring up Aliyah Mara, who is the Michigan Player of the Year. First pitch, what a tough bounce, striking the second baseman, perhaps even in the face. I think Chase took a terrible bounce as runners are in first and second, and immediately the trainer comes out. That ball just had like a magnet, hit something and straight to the face of Chase. Yeah, I mean, and this is early in the game. You know, he's batting for Purdue and where everybody is. And what a crazy start here for Boo 
De Oliveira, third season. Mother to Mila, just three years old. Left cruise with runners at first and second. And one out, and that'll bring up the third baseman, Maya Moy, the sophomore. 206 with two home runs. Started to tell you last and as you look at the brace on that left leg, she suffered a torn meniscus and complete rupture of her ACL on March 15th, running through first base. The doctor said it would be extremely difficult to return as she slaps this one foul as she would need full extension before being allowed to play. Jenny, she had minimal swelling and was up for the challenge. So for three weeks, she had an hour of physical therapy at 7 a.m., five days a week, in addition to practice. She returned on April 5th at Ohio State after missing 11 games. And she's been out there without an ACL, still stealing bases and playing a solid third base. Cannot deliver there with runners at first and second. I've heard of great athletes playing without ACLs, but it's not the easiest thing to do. No, it's not, but I think it's a true testament to some of these athletes that are playing with injuries uh, for Moy specifically. Just how tough she really is to, to want this bad enough to get out here and find a way to play when you're not 100%. And a lot of times you, you feel players that, you see players that just will not play unless they're 100%. Not always in fast pitch. I feel like in fast pitch, they find ways to battle through some of the toughest injuries just to get back out on the field. So this is Collins. One bounce up there. One to stay put. Lotta behind the plate, catching Bates. You saw her wait for the signal after knocking that one down. So Aaron Collins, then Burkar, and then that solid top of the order for Rutgers that Bates had no problems with the first time around, waiting. That's a good pitch from Bates. Yeah, good pitch by Bates there on that inside corner. That's where Collins needs to attack. Rutgers has been pretty aggressive on Purdue, obviously getting runners on base, but take a look at this pitch. Just way too far over that plate to watch it go by. Positive for Collins here. Still ahead in that count, three and one. But expect something to come in that zone from Bates. Drive it if it's there. Collins. Easy play over at third, tapping it for Bayon. Two nothing, Purdue on top of Rutgers. Go back to that Purdue crazy first inning here, Jenny Ritter. Yeah, Becker gets this double, misses first base, or looks appears to miss first base. And then there's some question of whether or not she touched. After that, stays on second base. Immediately after that, ba Baker gets a single, scores Becker. And then later, ba Baker's able to score as well. All right, the bright new head coach for Rutgers, Kristen Butler, coming over from Toledo. Coach, a wacky start to this one as it did look like the runner missed first base. Your thoughts on the start here? You know, uh, you know, I thought our, that call didn't go our way. I thought she missed first base, but you know what? That's uh, that's what the game's about. So we'll get after it again. You know, I think Cora Price settled in a little bit, uh, shook out some nerves. So we're excited for her to to get going. Coach, we all salute the success you've had at Rutgers. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So Kristen Butler. 104 wins at Toledo before coming over to Rutgers. 
and a great catcher at Florida. And Jenny Ritter, I will say, Boo de Oliveira claims she hit a home run against <laughs> you. She also claims she struck out a lot against you. Do you know if you face Kristen Butler at all in a non-conference matchup? Oh, you? yeah, and I'm sure she hit one off me, <laughs> and I struck her out, hopefully. I don't know. Kristen Butler was a good hitter as well, so was Boo. Uh, you know, the great part about it is you see so many of these players that you face that are now coaches, uh, you know, and you, you think to yourself, gosh, if they just teach any of these girls any talent that they have and the mindset that they have, they're going to have a great program. So I love that they joined the coaching ranks. Becker popping it out to Burkar. It was Becker who was the player that we're not certain if she did hit first base. Nonetheless, they kept her at second and she came around to score that first run as once again. And by the way, Boo de Oliveira does a lot of this. She'll start her players with the flex, the DP, and rotate players around. So when you watch a Purdue game, you see a lot of moving pieces. Definitely pay attention because a lot, a lot will change. And, and she's smart to use in a situation that, that makes a lot of sense to put players in the right spot at the right time. Especially as well with second baseman Kendall Chase taking that shot off the face. We hope she's okay, but we understand there's quite a bit of blood involved. Trying to keep you updated on her status if we can. I will say before coming on the air, Jenny Ritter, who won a national championship at Michigan, did say night games are one thing. <laughs> Late night games. You even said you start to get a little bat crazy, and that's exactly kind of what we've seen here. You have to think about it, too. I mean, you've had a long delay. Not only have you had a long delay, but you've been waiting all day to play to begin with. Then you have a long delay. All you want to do is get out on the field. You're sitting here. You've done your warm-ups. The rain comes. You're sitting there. You've got to find a way to entertain yourself. There's always one. To me, I feel like there's always one, Dean, that gets the team going, gets them a little nutty, and then by night games, I mean, the team is in rare form, but they play well, too. And I think that, you know, we saw that a little bit with Purdue here in the first inning where they were just attacking. And it was like they were playing loose and ready to go. And, you know, you've got to maintain that. Both of these teams have to maintain that energy and excitement as late as it is. So this is Baker who had the RBI. This time she'll sit down with a strikeout. And, boy, Price has really settled down after getting up those two runs in the first inning. And this is a price I expected to see. Somebody that hits her corners beautifully, makes her pitches move, gets some strikeouts when she can, but does not get attacked like she did in that first inning with Purdue. Credit to Purdue for really coming through and hitting uh, the strikes that she threw, but this is more of a price type of pitching outing. Dan, pop it over to Heliopolis. And Price is settling in. Purdue leading it two to nothing. We're joined by their third year head coach, Boo De Oliveira. And Boo, first of all, a two hour delay and then some craziness. Most importantly, though, we want to check on your second baseman, Kendall Chase. How's she doing? Uh, they're still examining her now. She took a she took a pretty good shot to the face. <laughs> Coach, talk about your offense, your game plan to just attack that first pitch. Sure looked like that was the game plan. Uh, but how did you look to attack Price here going in? You know, we just had the mindset of whatever it takes to win tonight, and you see our hitters are being more aggressive. Um, when Price is putting it in the zone and it's a drivable pitch, we're swinging, and we're going to keep that mindset all night. Well, Boo, we can tell it's going to be a wild and wacky night, including behind you as well. Good luck to your team. <laughs> Thank you. called it Jenny Ritter you said that because at the end of the day right these are still young student athletes having a good time it's late they had, got ready they had to stop start again and well these are college students this is when they come alive Dean this is, this is the time this is the time to make it happen all right so it'll be nine in the top of the order for Rutgers Sydney Bates has looked solid to start here in the circle as Adriana Burkar hitting 242. 
And then they'll turn it over to the top of the order for Coach Butler. Bates, no problem. Bates has done a good job just attacking the batters, getting quick outs. If there is a hit, you do get a quick out. Bates does a nice job here, seeing the ball come back at her, jump towards it, make a quick out, no problem. So important for pitchers to field their position. Cruz. Senior hitting 358 with pinball machine like numbers 14 doubles, 2 triples, 10 home runs, 39 RBI, 46 runs. She grounded to the shortstop Becker her first time up as Bates. Able to take care of Hughes and Winger and Iliopolis. Second time through, not so much as Hughes with a one out single. And this is a good place for Rutgers. Again, Winger, Iliopolis, two big hitters behind Hughes. So for her to reach, go inside out on this and drive it down the right side of the field and get on base, that is key. As a as a leadoff hitter with those two hitters behind you, that is your job. Find a way, any way, to get on base. Good job by Hughes. So this will bring up a talented freshman from Carlisle, PA. Seventeen home runs leads the Big Ten. Rutgers, when she hits a home run, they're eleven and three. And we mentioned those three consecutive walkouts that began back in late April. Walk-off home runs to end games all by Winger. Well, this truly a clutch situation early on in the game, but you're behind two runs. Anyway, you can find a way for a long ball to come through here with Hughes on base. Put you right back into this game. Give me We've talked a lot about what Coach Butler has brought. Remember, she was the SEC Player of the Year as a power hitter catcher. How about coach and catcher? I mean, look at the similarities. Winger actually a higher batting average. Chris and Butler maybe a few more home runs. But similar, similar, similar. And when we spoke with Coach Butler, it was we wanted to compare her. She was an outstanding catcher in her own right, power hitter. And you look at Winger as a freshman comparing to her senior numbers. I mean, that says a lot about what that type of player, what Winger can do in her next three years after this one and what she's done so beautifully here her freshman year. Out of the count, one, two with Hughes at first base. Hughes can run. She's 23 of 26 on the season, stealing bases. I'm actually a bit surprised she's not already taken off. 2-2 two -two pitch, and there she goes. A hit and run, and a well-executed hit and run. Doesn't get any better than that, right? New second baseman in there as well. And with one out, Rutgers has runners at first and second. In any way you can, you find a way to put a ball in play, that's all you can do. Wingert finds a way to put the ball in play. Nothing fancy, kind of a blooper. Picks the ball, almost gets to it. It's actually in her glove, but pops out. By the time it pops out, because Hughes is running on it, Hughes is already at second base. If Hughes were just tagging up or stopped somewhere in the middle, on hit and run because she saw it in the air, Hicksonball would have been able to make that play at second base. So I think a big credit, kind of an underrated credit to Hughes for not running back when she saw that ball in the air. Hit and run, you've got to go. So some instructions for the runners now with Iliopoulos. Struck out. As Bates went one, two, three inning, the first inning with a strikeout. Uh, Iliopolis, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week coming in. 
Runners at first and second with one out. Heliopolis, who hit 409 during her last stop with the Greek national team that is hoping to qualify for the next Olympics. Cross for a strike. And I think, you know, if you're Iliopolis and you have the power that you have, you stay patient on a 2 0 count. Boy, was that pitch over the plate. It's one of those ones where, to me, some, some hitters choose to be patient, but I'd want the green light on it and just drive that over the fence. Got that ability, right? 12 home runs, 12 doubles, and a triple. 41 RBI. She's hitting 404 with runners in scoring position. Big lead from the Speedy Hughes as she heads back to second. And Hughes almost made it halfway. That was a huge lead. And this pitch here on the inside corner. Just missing. A little bit too far in, but not a bad placement. Full count. Another pretty good pitch to hit right there. Heliopolis has not been able to barrel a Bates pitch yet. A strikeout, and as you said, a good opportunity to swing earlier, but didn't. Full count. One out. Runners at first and second. Bottom of the third. Bases are loaded. Just one out and Bowman coming to the plate. This is good for Rutgers. Again, they're not, like you said, they're not squaring up a, a pitch. But they're getting runners on base. They're executing hit and runs. They're finding a way to take advantage of, of errors or bad hops in the field. Uh, unfortunate bad hops, don't get me wrong. But they've been able to take advantage and get runners on base in that respect. And now bases are loaded. This is where the timely hit has to come through if you're Bowman. Single in the second inning, that 272 average. Five home runs and 17 RBI for this Rutgers team that got hot at the right time in April, beginning on the 12th, Jenny Ritter. They swept Penn State. They took two of three from Iowa, and they won a doubleheader against Maryland. And then right here on this field, they were able to salvage the final game against Indiana. That was big, and then took two of three against Michigan State, losing the last game against Michigan State in eight innings. This Rutgers team has played a lot of extra inning games this season. Six and seven, 13 extra inning games. Bates out in front was hoping to get Bowman to chase. Yeah, not a bad pitch there for a, a 0-2 count. And you're right, it's just to get Bates, excuse me, Bowman to chase. This will get by. All the runners way off. And take a look at Hughes at third base. This ball gets passed. And it just takes a fortunate hop for Purdue right back towards home plate as Halata is able to grab it. Be a little bit closer to home plate than Hughes felt comfortable with. And with one out and bases loaded, the last thing you want to do is cause an out at, at home plate just because you try to be too aggressive. New second baseman. Trouble. Looks like not quite sure she was able to tag second base Hickson ball, but they'll say... She did, but a run will get across for Rutgers. As remember, Chase taking that shot to the face. Take a look at the pitch sequence and that 
final play as Bowman standing at first base with the RBI. And Bates really threw Bowman well. A strike there up in the zone forces her to swing and miss, tries to get her to fish. That wild pitch did not hurt Bates. And then this ground ball back up the middle. A good pitch for Bowman to hit and a great job for Bowman to really just find a way to put the ball in play. A play could not be made at home where that was hit. And even though there was an out, she was able to plate one. And that's why the score is two to one. Runners at first and third. Now two outs for Bates. Bates knocks it down, but that should tie the game. Bates actually, I don't think she realized that Russ was kind of taking her time getting down to first base. She hesitated. With that hesitation, Rutgers has tied it at two. Again, you hit the ball hard, you put it in play, things can happen. Bates reacts, runs after that pitch, kind of hesitates a second to see maybe if the throw is even worth making. But at that point, Russ beats it out, ties that ball game up. Do you agree, Jenny, if she doesn't hesitate based on how close it was? I think if she just picks it up and slings it over there. Yeah. Russ, Russ is not a speedster running down to first. Right, but you have to think, too, when a ball comes at you that quick, your your first reaction is to react and then hustle after it. And it did roll quite a bit of away from Bates. So in a lot of cases, you can look up and it's way too late. And it was almost like she had anticipated right. that it was too late before she just planned to get up and make the throw. But you don't want to make an error throw and try to rush it, especially when the runner's already there. So it's kind of one of those catch-22 situations where, you know, if, if Bates picked it up and, and threw it without really getting her feet under her, she could have made the out, sure, but she also could have made a rush throw, an overthrow, and more runs could have scored. So, got to be careful in those situations. Runners at first and second. This is ripped, and Rucker should take the lead. Coach Butler Waving Bowman around, and Rutgers has responded with three runs in the bottom of the third to take a 3-2 lead over Purdue. And really a great job of Rutgers the second time through the lineup. Really just attacking Bates pitches. This one up in the zone about belt high. Kamara just takes it and lifts it over Hicksonbaugh, the second baseman, and into that outfield as it bounces away from Baker. Bowman's able to score easily. Ross at third. And Mara stays at first base. He's got 118 innings. 3.60 ERA. But she is their number two that puts the battle up. She throws in the low 60s. Her changeup is a go-to, so you're going to look for her to change speeds a lot and really go at that changeup as a strike. But you have to attack the zone, too. This is something that's really important for Moody. ...in there who played in the 1994 World Cup for the U.S. World Cup team without an ACL, and he was incredible. You can do it. It's a nice list to be on, Dean. Yeah. I think you can put Moy on there because she's been an important part of this turnaround for Rutgers. Again, 28 and 23. You talk about a team last year that was 19 and 31. They won four Big Ten games, but with Moy and these superstar freshmen, they finished 11 and 12 in Big Ten play in the first season under Kristen Butler. This is a team, too. I asked Kristen Butler, I said, you know, their goal the whole season was figure out how to get enough wins to make it to the Big Ten tournament. Well, they're here. So are they just excited to be here? And she said they had discussed that, just being excited to be here versus wanting to go and take some games. And they really wanted to take some games. She, she gave them a day off the week before the tournament, and they were ticked off, she said. They, she, they wanted to get out there. They wanted to bat. They were eager to be out there and play. And that's when she really had felt like she had gotten them on the level that she needed them to. They're there to play. They're there to win. They're not just there happy to be there. They're happy to compete. Coach Butler, some instructions for Russ. Standing at third as Rutgers got three across here in the bottom of third to take a 3-2 lead on Purdue. 
to think about it, the game before Penn State, right, had that two-run home run in the top of the first, but Indiana was able to use their small ball to advance. Strikeout, Moody comes off the bench and gets the strikeout, but Rutgers pushes three across. Top of the fifth inning, Rutgers, your number six seed, their highest seed since entering the Big Ten. And Purdue, your number 11 seed. Rutgers leading 3-2. to two. Purdue coming to the plate here, top of the fifth. It'll be 7, 8, and 9 for Purdue. Patusik, Moody, and Halata. Riley Patusik. And 2-0-8. Got some good speed, and she is safe. That'll be an infield hit for the freshman Platusic. Can't ask for more from Platusic. Obviously, thrown in in a situation uh, as an unfortunate injury by Chase on that hop, uh, bad hop, and then she comes in, puts the ball in play. This really comes off the end of her bat, but it's such a slow roller that Platusic's able to beat it out. And it was a close play, but definitely safe. Mara's not able to make a quick throw. She charged it, just not in time. Now Moody's got a chance to help herself in the circle. As she comes to the plate, she does have that one home run. Ten RBI, limited at bats for Moody, just 33 official at bats. Seven hits, two runs, five walks, five Ks, and that one home run. Not a bad pitch there by Price Winger. Tries to frame that a little bit more in. Moody stays patient on it, but this one not missing the corner that much and beautifully at the knees. So Winger. Try to bring it back in. Little high. Look at Wingert. Toss it down there. Coach Butler said he could do that. Her, I think her exact words are cannon of an arm. And she's throwing from her knees a bullet to first base. Like it's no problem. This one will have eyes. And Boo holding up the runner Platusik. It's been some sketchy base running, to say the least, here to start this one. Yeah, a couple, like, small details that are just missed a little bit, but either way, Platusa gets the second Moody on first. Purdue is the first inning that they've really had anything going since the first. Price in the second, third, and fourth. It's gotten one, two, three every single time. So I told you, Lou de Oliveira making several changes. Got a pinch hitter as it'll be Binks. And how about that Purdue bench behind Lou de Oliveira who was having a hard time just keeping it together. I would too, right? Knowing that the players, it wasn't like the players were being quiet like they normally do with their stealth bombing of the camera. They were being loud and crazy, which you yeah. said would happen though, Jenny, because it's such a late well, start. And to me, these are the fun moments where you don't have to ask, the, the coach doesn't have to push you to bring energy. You're going to bring it just by maybe sheer tiredness. Uh, but at the same time, you bring the energy. Sometimes you have to hone it in and make sure they stay focused. But at the same time, I think Purdue, I mean, since we've seen them walk on the field since that tarp's come off, they have had all kinds of energy. So here's Binks. Purdue got something cooking here in the top of the fifth. And I think it's worth mentioning, we've talked a lot about this turnaround for Rutgers. Well, Buda Oliveira, what a job she's done. 14 more wins compared to last year. 78 more runs, 16 more hits, 67 more RBIs, 48 fewer home runs given up and an ERA that dropped a full point for Purdue. So the Boilermakers, making their 11th overall and 7th straight appearance in the Big Ten Tournament, have had a solid year despite being the 11th seed as Moy gets underneath it. That is a massive out. An infield pop fly with runners at first and second and no out. That will work. 
Texas. We're talking about a good season for Boo and a great season on the mound for the Rutgers pitcher, Cora Price, who, by the way, we told you her story as a military child starting over in Germany, ended up in Colorado where she had 423 strikeouts and 43 wins in her high school career. How many strikeouts you have in your high school career, oh Jenny Ritter? No. I, didn't like keep, I didn't keep track of that, but I know we didn't win much, and we had a whole lot of fun. We battled well. We weren't the, the most talented. I just want to touch, Dean, a little bit on like what you were saying with uh, Coach Buda Alvera and what she's done to be able to turn this around. I mean, she's really put this culture in where she's going to start the best 9, 10 in the lineup. And it doesn't matter whether they're freshmen or seniors, whether they're scholarship players or walk-ons. She is going to play the best, and she's really been clear about that with her team, that you are competing for your spot. You don't earn it because of the amount your scholarship is. You don't not earn it because you're a walk-on. And she's just been able to kind of motivate her entire dugout, um, her entire lineup with positivity and find a way to put her strongest in when she needs it. And I think that, that's why you've seen so much success from them as they've grown to get better. Yeah, well said. Will Hoyt, as we mentioned, a walk-on that was named to the Big Ten All-Defensive Team. to Boone's three Bs, Becker, Baker, and Bayon. Top of the order. One out. The 2-6 standing at second. Moody at first. Becker digging in. She had that leadoff double that was somewhat controversial. Out at second, safe at first. So now runners at first and third. Again, with Baker and Bayon up after Becker. It's a tongue twister a little bit. They are big hitters. You still have runners in first and third situation. There's two outs, but these are the two batters that you want to see up, Baker and Bayon. You want them, as you see Coach Butler go out to talk to her team maybe a little bit about this, what the right strategy is. But you want the heart of your lineup to pop up when there's runners on base and you want them to come through with timely heat. That is the expectation. The 2019 BTN Big Ten K comes to Grant Park in Chicago on August 11th. Represent your school in the 10K and 5K races. Then enjoy an incredible post-race tailgate. Register right now at btnbig10k.com. Let's take another look at our Meyer Big Ten softball tournament bracket. As we told you for the first time ever, three teams in the Big Ten finished with 20 conference wins. We'll see all three of them tomorrow. Michigan, Northwestern, and Minnesota. Amazing seasons. And don't count out the Ohio State Buckeyes. Wisconsin put them in the NCAA tournament no matter what, in my opinion, as well as Ohio State. I think There'll be plenty of Big Ten teams in as we go on through this tournament, Jenny, as this one is hit foul. For the first time in a long time, we'll be talking about the possibility of three Big Ten teams hosting a regional. And this is two years off of Minnesota totally getting robbed a couple years ago with that amazing season where they didn't get a host. There's legitimate talk where all three of those teams could host a regional. Yeah, and, and they, and really, in reality, they deserve it. It's going to depend on the good wins they had early on the season against ranked opponents. They call those good wins, uh, bad losses. Those count, as well as your RPI, as well as other things within the selection, your strength of schedule, um, your record. But at the same time, I mean, that's why it's so important when you look at this tournament. Michigan, Minnesota. Northwestern all need to go as deep as possible in this tournament because that even matters. Baker rips this one, and that is going to drop in. Purdue will tie, and they can take the lead as coming around is Becker. So Becker scores after Patusic scores, and Purdue has taken the lead 4-3 in the top of the fifth. Yeah. 
the third baseman, number 12. And I think at this top of this lineup, you just see the power that Purdue can bring this. A pitch on the outside corner that Baker just extends, drives it opposite side of the field, gets past Burkar in the outfield. She tries to leap to get it, but too far, too deep. Allows two runs to score and a huge hit. Again, the top of the lineup showing up here for Purdue. In a really key situation to take that lead back. And with Baker standing at second base, that brings up the first team all Big Ten selection, Jenny Bayen. Bayen is one for two. She's hit the ball deep both times. First time up. Hit it deep off the wall. And only got a single out of it, though, as the runner was not all the way to second base. And then the last time up, she flew out to right field. Jenny Bain came into the game with a squad best 59 hits, 47 runs, and 40 RBI. And 362 to start. Leads the team in extra base hits with 12 doubles. She's got a triple, 13 home runs, slugging percentage of 687. And on top of that, she walked 34 times. Her on-base percentage, almost 500. That kind of season for Purdue. Not a bad pitch by Price there on that outside corner. Gets Bayon really thinking about it. Bayon holds back, but beautiful pitch on a 2-2. To be just outside. Bayon, driven, but caught there by Aniko. Iliopoulos, Bowman, and Russ do up for Rutgers. And once again, Rutgers needs to come from behind. Bottom of the fifth. And Purdue, with two in the top of this inning, has taken over the lead again. They had the lead 2-0 after one. Rutgers came back with three in the third. But the Boilermakers... Two in the top of the fifth for a 4-3 lead. Purdue four runs on six hits in an air. Rutgers coming to bat here. Three runs on six hits. Moody really stepping in and doing a good job here in the circle. First batter to see Moody was Maya Moy. So that's four batters from now. The reason for bringing that up is that Rutgers really jumped on Sidney Bates a second time through that lineup. And so it's key for Moody really to get through one, two, three, or even if one gets on, get through these four batters and try to get out of this inning without facing the lineup the second time through the lineup. I think that's a good place for her to live if she can focus on just getting out of this inning quickly. Leopolis. Good play by Hicksonball, who came in to replace Chase. And Hicksonball getting it done defensively. Able to get Iliopoulos out at first base. Really great job by Hicksonball. Again, you're talking about somebody that isn't here as a mainstay in that lineup at that second base position. She's taking care of it, gets in front of it, good backhand. Quickly transfers it to her hand and makes a good, quick balance throw. So that'll bring up Bowman. Had a base hit in the second inning. Fielder's choice in the third, but she got an RBI off that fielder's choice, and she came around to score a run as well. She's got 18 RBI and 12 runs. Got her average at 278. Slugging percentage of 468. Good corner there by Moody. A low pitch, low in that zone, but also hitting the corners. Nicole Bowman. 88 from Downers Grove, Illinois. Cole 
Joe's uncle, William Peterson, starred as Gil Grissom in the original CSI television series. She pops this high in the air. Second baseman, Hickson Ball, taking over. She's got an assist and a put out here for Purdue in the bottom of the fifth. A really good job by Moody, I think, again, going back. Talking about what pitches she's been able to throw. It's ahead of the count. Throws a couple to try to get Bowman to swing and miss at. She doesn't bite, then brings something back in that zone and gets her to miss it on movement. And Penelope Russ waited on that pitch so perfectly right from Moody and didn't overswing, just hit it where they weren't, and she's got a base hit. Not only that, she attacked the first pitch. This pitch up in that zone, and as a strike, a little bit on that inside corner, but Russ waits on it like you said, connects and turns on it, finds a way to drive it through that 5-6 hole, get herself on base. So Russ, freshman from Huntington Beach, California. And now Rutgers will bring in a pinch runner. It's going to be Haley Hocklatubi, junior from Laguna Niguel, California, Dana Hills High School. Rutgers has got a few California players. And California player, pinch running for a California player. A two-out single. Akhlatubi standing at first base as Leah Mara, two for two. Freshman, 246. This is a situation, yeah, there's two outs, but this is for Rutgers. If they battle, get a two-out rally here and find a way to string a couple hits, the innings are getting a little bit late. There's something you want to try to tie this game up as quickly as possible. Moody missing the plate a little bit more on Mara than you've seen so far this game on those two balls. Offspring pitch is high. Yeah, it's been high a lot. She's been throwing, almost hanging on to it a little too long, but it's starting to hang kind of at those numbers. She can bring that down in the zone. She'll be more, much more effective. And she's already pretty effective so far this game. The story on Mara from Michigan, right? I remember Coach Butler coming over from Toledo. And solid connection there. And decided Michigan Player of the Year decided to go to Rutgers. That doesn't happen every day. No, definitely not. But I think, you know, Kristen Butler coming here, she's going to bring in some very good recruits. You see these freshmen, Mara, Cora Price, two of Kristen Butler's recruits. Graphic right there means a bright future for Rutgers and yeah. makes this competitive Big Ten softball conference even tougher and adds more talent in the dugout as well. So <laughs> very a little bit of energy brought into that Rutgers dugout, but I think this is what I say. Mar Maya Moy was the first batter that Moody faced. And now, instead of getting out of this inning, you've got two runners on, and you're turning this lineup over the second time through. And I thought Rutgers did such a great job against Sidney Bates the second time through, making adjustments and stringing some hits together. This is a really good place for them to be. Rudy Oliveira, discussion with Moody, as well as Halata, catcher for Moody. On in relief of Bates. Purdue got two in the first, two in the fifth. To answer Rutgers three in the bottom of the third. And a 4 3 lead. A little bit of trouble here, though. Two outs, runners at first and second. Akatubi at second. Mara at first. And 
Phillips is more. Moore did get a strikeout against Moody on a high pitch. It's kind of spanning the strikes on too much. She's got to make her adjustments here. Wait for the strike to come in the zone and not swing at a pitch that Moody wants her to. Moy from Bradenton, Florida. Way out in front of that one. Got a good pitch to swing at. Again, patience of Moy to find a pitch that comes in that zone. It was inside corner, so she turned on it, turned on it too much, and then, like you said, Dean, way out in front of it. She can sit back and square that up. Late night softball action on the Big Ten Network. We saluted the grounds crew. Definitely want to salute the fine men and women working for the Big Ten Network. All four games today. Outstanding work again by each and every one of you as Purdue gets out of it. And through five, Purdue leading by one over Rutgers. Hey! Top of the seventh inning. Bloomington, Indiana. Andy Moore Field as we are in the final inning of the opening day of the 2019 Big Ten softball tournament on BTN. And a leadoff base hit for Platusik in the seventh spot for Blue de Oliveira and a leadoff single for the Boilermakers. How about Patusik finding her way here? Gets into the game. Two for two. Up to bat. This is a low pitch in the zone. She drives it right back up the middle. Can't ask for more from a batter, especially one that gets on base. You need an insurance run here. And Price, last inning, just four pitches to get three outs. And a much better start here for Purdue with Patusic on base. Moody who would be the pitcher of record if she can take care of Rutgers, who, by the way, is bringing up their big hitters, Winger, Iliopoulos, and Bowman. So pop it in the air and easy out over at first base for Bowman. Two teams with big turnaround seasons. Relatively new head coaches, brand new head coach, of course, for Rutgers and Kristen Butler. Third year for Bude Oliveira, who coaches third base for the Purdue Boilermakers. As it'll be the catcher, Haley Halata, who struck out in her only other appearance. She's got a small piece of that to fall it off with Halata up at the plate. So there's Boo. You talked about it earlier as part of changing the culture. She adopted this hashtag GFDF, Grit, Family, Discipline, and Fortitude. And they adopted that when she came in, kind of what you were talking about. Also about it doesn't matter if you're a walk-on or a full scholarship player. And it's working out. Fielder Nico over to get it. And after that leadoff single, Price to get the two outs. Credit to Price. I really think her pitches have been mixed enough. She's had a couple innings where Purdue's been able to string a few hits together and come through big. Really a big credit to Mallory Baker specifically. But other than that, Price has really done a good job being efficient, going right at Purdue batters, letting her defense do the work, and getting the outs. So here's Becker, one for three, hitting 333. She had that double to start the game. 
And this one will get over the shortstop Hughes. And with two outs, Purdue still alive. Now remember, Becker started the game with that controversial double. Nobody knew what was going on. Yeah, and again, Becker gets on base. Question is, did she miss it or hit the side of that bag right there? Umpires say she does touch it, but in this situation, you see Hughes get the ball in and then throw to first base. And because they throw to first base, Becker thinks she has to run back, go tag first base, thinks she's Coach getting Butler. in a rundown. All of this time, the umpire has called dead ball. Now, one thing I noticed in that that I haven't seen in the previous replays, Hughes actually put her hands up and called time before she threw it to first base. As soon as she calls time, it is a dead ball. If she didn't do that, in my opinion, it would have still been a live ball, and Becker could have run back and gotten in that rundown and been called out. So it would have been an interesting situation if that weren't how it, how it happened. New pitcher for Coach Butler. So Coach Butler, impressive performance from her starting pitcher, but now she'll bring on Whitney Jones. Whitney Jones, 4.36 ERA. She throws in the low 60s. As an off speed, she keeps it down in the zone. It's about putting it in the right spot to get some ground balls, get this team out of this inning. And you just need to get one out. That's her goal right now. Get this out. Get your team back on offense. And I think it's a smart decision in this case to move Price out and just work to get an out here. I will right, we'll take one more look at our Big Ten softball tournament bracket brought to you by Meyer. Some fantastic games coming your way tomorrow right here on the Big Ten Network. The Buckeyes and the Badgers. Michigan, once again, your regular season champs taking on Tyra Perry's big hitting Illini. Northwestern, Kate Drohan's team with the freshmen with all kinds of moxie will take on Indiana. And then, of course, the mighty Minnesota Golden Gophers awaiting the winner of this one. Inside. A good strike there on the inside corner. Again, low pitches. Winnie Jones M.O. Keep it low in that zone, locate on the corners, and get a ground ball out here. That's all she needs to do. Good play over at first by Bowman. Rutgers bringing up Wingert, Iliopolis, and Bowman. They have been great with walk-off winners. Can they do it again? 12.57 East Coast time. There's still work to be done, though. As part of the 2019 Big Ten Softball Tournament, Rutgers has been noted for their late-game heroics, and they'll need it here. They come in as the number six seed, looking to get their first win ever in the Big Ten Tournament. It's only their third appearance. They've never won. And to do it, they've got to come from behind to knock off the 11 seed. Purdue Boilermakers, and you talk about that late game drama, Winger. Three consecutive home games, walk off home runs for Winger. Obviously, that won't work here, but it would tie it. Winger, Heliopolis, and Bowman. I mean, talk about a shot of adrenaline that it would give your team, too. A long ball or even a deep hit. Something from Winger to really start this inning off in the right direction. A walk would work in that case. You've got your first runner on with no outs. That is a tying run. That matters. And that should build some energy as you see that dugout getting a little bit more excited. It is 1 a.m. and the rally caps are out for Rutgers as Nissa Iliopoulos we started the show about Iliopolis and how about this now coach Butler wants to talk to both runner and her hitter 
Again, that run matters a lot. So if you're Coach Butler, you're sitting there talking to your batters about what the game plan is, whether it's you're going to execute a sack bunt here. If you're Iliopoulos, you're going to put that ball down. You're going to get uh, Kiefer, who's now at first base, to second base. And then Bowman, you're going to come through the hit and run. Who knows what they're talking about? But at that point, you're getting all three of them on the same page, prepared, sticking to a game plan, and trusting that game plan. A lot of cases, that gets them in the right spot. Can't be a key for the pinch runner. Junior from California. Run for winger. See right there, Coach Butler wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page, including the pinch runner. He's attacking the pitch right there is Nissa Iliopoulos. That is one name that Jackie Joseph does not want to see for quite some time, right? Four home runs against the Spartans in the series finale. That's a good weekend. She's 0 for 2 this game, and it's one of those things where and now in an 0-2 count, you, you don't do it, but it was a question. Do you sack bunt? Kiefer to second base, even with Iliopoulos, you take that bat out of her hand or not. They choose not to. And she is fighting from behind right now. I'm talking about those four home runs. Michigan State won two of three. And she had a game-tying home run in the last game, a game that was pushed to extra innings because of her home run, but the Spartans did come back and win it. I'll tell you what, she is battling because those last couple pitches were not hard to, or not easy to put a bat on. She finds a way to follow them both off. Credit to quick hands and the strength that she has. Was out of the strike zone. She fouls that one away as well. As we told you, a member of the Greek national softball team. An older brother who played baseball at Truman State University. And Iliopoulos doesn't get enough of this one. And Katusik with the first out in the Purdue Boilermakers. Just two outs away from mild upset here. You gotta give a lot of credit to Moody in that circle. I think she's really done a great job mixing pitches, keeping it low in the zone. She's attacked the zone, which is her MO. She needs to do that. Bowman pops it up. And now Purdue one out away from advancing and getting their 31st win. First time since 2015. Purdue would be at 31 or higher. Remember, this is a Purdue team that comes in having lost nine in a row, and they do not look anything like a team that's lost nine in a row. No, and you have to imagine, you lose nine in a row. First of all, they were the good teams, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Illinois. All Illinois' bats, Wisconsin scrappy, Northwestern obviously leading the conference for most of the season until the last series. Those are tough, as you see, a hit by pitch here, another positive for Rutgers to get another runner on base. But those are tough outings, and to me, even if you don't win them, you're battle-tested. And you came into the Big Ten tournament wanting to win, hungry to win, and you can see that they're fighting here. See this ball down, hits the shin. Hits the shin of the batter, Russ, and then she's able to take first base again. Three passes like that, those create rallies. There's two offs, but there's two runners on. All you have to do is play one. You've got one in scoring position. Rod Radcliffe came over from Toledo with Coach Butler. 
Brandon Duncan also on the staff and Justin Butler's husband Marcus Smith who was a pretty good fullback for University of Wisconsin Stevens Point got into softball became a head coach Owens Community College in Toledo a couple other schools won a lot of games and another impressive husband wife combination getting it done as softball coaches here we go Runners at first and second. The tie-in run at second base. Mara, great play at first by Huffman, and she'll get over to first base, and Purdue has won their 31st game, knocking off the number six seed Rutgers, and they've earned a date tomorrow night against Minnesota. What a gutsy defensive play by Huffman. You can't ask for more. And to see your first baseman go all out, make that play. Take a look at this. This was a hit. This would have scored the run. Huffman gets there, gets up, sprints to first base, and makes that third out. And Rutgers is not able to score. Game over. What a huge defensive play for the end. And they advance in the Big Ten tournament. Just really impressive outing altogether. Mallory Baker, what an outstanding job.